Everybody, Sam Strains here. Welcome back to the railway. Welcome back to another live stream. I'm really glad to be back here, and I hope you guys are excited about it as well. But uh, yeah, I think this is stream number ten. I think I actually finally got to uh, ten live shows. It doesn't feel like I've done ten, but uh, if I've added it up right, uh, this is the tenth show. So anyway, we've got a super chat, a super chat in already. You say I, I did say super chat this time, and not Snapchat from Dot Cam Pilot. Um, he said he wants to see the four seven four five seven five prayer with the Excalibur Express coaches please so that's a fantastic idea I wasn't expecting to get a, a super chat as quick as that but thank you so much for that um, basically what I was going to start by saying was that last week was just amazing so thank you to everyone who supported me last week I think we actually broke all records for super chats last week so I don't know why but everyone was particularly generous last week and of course uh, in, a, in a very short while I'm going to thank each and everybody who uh, who did donate to me and I'm also going to be running some requests but anyway how's everybody doing hope you're all having a nice Sunday and a nice Mother's Day as well um, hello to any mothers watching I, I, I seriously doubt there will be any uh, mothers watching but if there are um, make yourselves known and uh, the guys down here in the in the chat will uh, give you some Mother's Day love I suppose um, so anyway yes uh, as you can probably tell from the title today today's stream is gonna be a bit of a review and I quite enjoyed doing the reviews before Christmas that I did live and a lot of people said they liked that as well so actually in January when I first decided to do this the plan was that I was going to review the Hatton's uh, P-Class in the SECR Green because I'd already reviewed the grey one properly and I didn't necessarily want to do another full review on the green version um, but I did want to show it in a review so the live stream was going to be the way I did that but unfortunately it looks as though they have been a little bit delayed and while initially they were supposed to come out in uh, in uh, Q1 of 2018. It's looking like they're going to be a bit later so I'm having to do something else but what I'm going to review instead is of course this the J83. I think it's a really interesting model and I'm going to talk a little bit later on about why I think it's interesting but uh, first of all I'm going to thank everybody who donated last week and I've just had another one from Aidan Lido. He says hey Sam I just wanted to thank you for getting me into British Railroad. If it wasn't for you I would never have known. Oh that's no problem at all. My absolute pleasure and uh, really glad you're having fun in the hobby. Anyway strap yourself in because the list of thank yous goes on quite a while this time and as I say last week it was just incredible people broke records so if you donated to me last week thank you you know it means a lot and you guys are really helping me keep this channel alive so here we go then uh, some some of these people by the way donated more than once which is crazy but uh, again thank you so Andrew Keeley you Lucad Hagman Ollie Turf 26 AG Finley Lee Molson Harry's Life Rob Humphreys Charles Curtis Shining Time 4 Nirate Goal is, I think, the way he told me to say it, so I hope that's right. 8 bit, eight -bit Mega Blade, I still can't get that one right. Uh, Jack Clark, massive, massive thank you to Rob Humphreys, who donated quite a lot, I seem to remember. Thank you, Rob, that was really generous of you. Not necessary, of course, but very generous nonetheless. Timsy Tanker, Daniel Pulley, Trainfan28, UFG2036, Jamie, he was known just as Jamie, Armed Reptile, and Sonic, Sonic Crafter Speed. Uh, hashtag speedcraft I think was his name so thank you to everybody who donated of course everyone who did donate uh, is going to be entered with a chance to to win their very own Bullman model like this this one's called Bilious and in the last stream of this series in just two weeks time I'm going to be drawing a winner so if you'd like a chance to win old Bilious here just get in there in the super chats and you will be entered automatically and you might win one of them there's not many of those around I'm only pre uh, I'm only creating 10 and I'm only giving two away this year so that should be uh, really awesome if you want to support me via super chat you can do um, there's another person who has so we've got the ugly duckman who wants to see panniers and pullmans every pannier you have pulling every pullman you have please I don't know if I'll be able to do that because I can only run um, so many locos on each controller before they go pop and Jake Darlin says uh, made it this time missed it last time so here's last week's as well I've ordered myself a p-class so in the spirit of that can you run your p-class with a rake of four uh, yeah a rake of four uh, red wheeled coaches no a rake of red four-wheel coaches. I don't know why that confused me. So thank you. I will absolutely do that. And K Van Cullen also sent me five pounds to say, uh, can Thomas make an appearance? So yeah, that's quite a few requests already. 
I will absolutely get down to those. And of course, if you want to make, uh, make a super chat to me, there's a little dollar sign in the chat there. Basically, all that allows you to do is send a little bit of money towards my channel. Only if you can afford to and only if you want to. I would never insist on that. And of course, all my videos are always going to be free to watch. So you'll never be behind a paywall or anything like that. But you know, if the channel's something you enjoy, if it's something you watch on a regular basis and you want to see it continue, then that's something you can do if you want to support me. And as you know, everyone's been super generous. So in that spirit, I do have some requests set up from last week, which I'm going to do. I'm going to do the first three straight away. And then I've got a couple more to do later on. And even from today already, I've got a few more to do. I also owe a shout out to XDTube, who's been asking me very kindly and very patiently for a shout out. So there you go. And also Serge GMM01. It's also his birthday today. So a very happy birthday to you. And I know there are a few other birthdays in the chat today as well. So a happy birthday to all of you guys, uh, if it is your birthday. And uh, of course, I hope you're all having a fantastic day. So before we get on with the review then, here we go with a few of my requests from last week. So the first one is on the outside line. And this was a request from Trainfan28, who actually wanted to see a spam can and a merchant navy with some Pullmans. Now, unfortunately, none of my, well, in fact, none of my Bullet Pacifics full stop have, I'm just checking whether the Ren ones do. No, they don't. None of them have a front coupling. So, unfortunately, I can't do double headers with those, which is a bit of a shame. Um, so, oops, no, wrong camera. That was a coupling. So I'm just going to have to run the one of those, unfortunately. I hope that's okay with you, Trainfan28, but I have got the Pullmans out there. Then UFG2036 wanted to see James with some blood and custard coaches, so that's absolutely fine. James is going to be more than happy to do that. And as you all know, James is more than happy to make an appearance on this, uh, on this channel. And as you can see, he's got a big smile on his face, which is absolutely what we like to see. And then also Daniel Pulley made a request to see the Blue Pullman, which is a great request. I don't think I've ever run this particular Blue Pullman before, which is going to be fantastic. Uh, so thank you very much to that, uh, Daniel. That's going to be great. And Lee Molson just sent a Snapchat, um, no, a, a super chat. <laughs> Keep doing that. Saying he bought an LNER D49 after watching the helpful review. Oh, that's great to hear, Lee. Hope you enjoy it. They, uh, they really are nice models, those. Uh, they seem to be very good and reliable. But anyway, let's, have, uh, let's start things off. Let's kick things off with a nice running session with these beautiful locos then. So here we go with Tangmir. That's the name of this one. I don't think I said that with my Pullman coaches or some of them and also James with some blood and custard coaches and uh, yes all of those requests I just got in I will be able to do even the pannier one um, although I might have to uh, cut down on all of the panniers I probably won't be able to run I don't know how many it is uh, six or so probably won't be able to run all that many because my controllers would probably go pop if I did that and I don't want to do that. But anyway, great requests. Again, three locos that never ordinarily run alongside each other, especially James and the Blue Pullman. They're very, very bizarre to see those together. But uh, certainly uh, not something I'm against in any way. You know what I'm like. I'll run absolutely anything. So thank you to these. Dawson Wazgaz says, hello. <laughs> so hello. Hope you're doing well. Um, Dylan Lynch says, can the railway children pannier tank? Uh, and duck double header train yeah i don't see why not you if you want to send a super chat for that i will absolutely give that a try that sounds fun <laughs> i might have to put a front coupling onto my um railway children pannier tank though because at the moment i don't think it, it had that fitted uh, there's a bit of an update on that by the way because uh, obviously the last thing you saw in last night's video was the fact that uh, the railway children pannier tank had gone up in smoke and flames and it was actually really unlucky uh, it was a few weeks ago now since i filmed it but i finished the review and seconds later well seconds later really after i'd finished filming the engine was still running and i noticed that she slowed down to a right crawl and as soon as i noticed that uh, there was a lot of smoke. I slowed her down, uh, took her to pieces to see if I could, uh, you know, free things up a little bit. But uh, it was gone. And uh, actually, the next time I tried to run it, about five minutes later, she wasn't going at all. So uh, it, it really wasn't too good. Anyway, I got in touch with Rails of Sheffield. And uh, even though I bought it before Christmas now, they said, yep. Yeah, send it back no problem we will uh, we'll send you a replacement luckily i didn't have to send the entire train pack uh, i just sent the loco and within a few days they'd replaced it for me so really i can't fault rails of sheffield uh, they really did do me proud there so yep yeah, good on rails of sheffield and uh, so now i do have a working railway children pannier tank which is very good news okay so 
As you know, um, the front camera today isn't set up right now because I'm going to be using that to do my unboxing in a few minutes. So I am going to have to do this bit blind. Well, you guys aren't going to see it, but I will try my best to narrate what's happening. So at the front here, I'm crouched next to the controller. This is weird. I'm sort of talking about myself in the third person or well, first person. Uh, I'm just stopping the locos in front of me here so that I can um, get, get them removed later on, but I won't do that right now. Just waiting for James to come in. Yep, yeah, here comes James, and I've stopped him at the front. So thank you to those requests. Fantastic as always. I always love running requests. And of course, if you've got one of your own, just feel free to send me a super chat of five pounds or five dollars or more, and include what you'd like me to run in the in the super chat message, and I will do that for you. Whether or not it's this week, I don't know because I've had quite a lot already. But I'll do my best to get around to it in the end. So let's uh, let's have a little bit of a chat. Let's see how everybody's doing. Uh, Melissa Leap says, uh, give me a shout out. So there you go. There's a shout out for you. Lucas Hobson says, I want to get some LMS coaches. Any recommendations? Um, you can't go wrong with Hornby ones, really. Um, my Hornby ones have always been fine. They're not the most detailed ones in the world, but then again, mine are quite old fashioned. So uh, if you want some more modern ones, I believe Hornby have just released some new ones. And they look very nice, although I can't, I can't pass any comment on them because I haven't got any. But if anybody does have them um, and they are good, let us know in the chat and we'll uh, we'll use that as a recommendation. Um, are you considering getting a Hornby Deltic model, Sam? Says Killing Joe, please. Um, not right now. I'm, I wouldn't be adverse to one. If I, if I see one at the right price, I will definitely pick one up. But uh, at the moment, the only Deltic I've got is a Lima one, which is very nice. Don't get me wrong. It's a very good runner, actually. But obviously, it's probably not as detailed as the up-to-date ones. Murray, Murray Finn, uh, Family says shout out. So there you go. Philip Page is saying hi, Sam. Silver Strains is saying shout out please and thank you. No problem, please and thank you, that's nice. Uh, Trainfan12 says, hi Sam, what's your opinion on Tang Tangmere? Uh, looking at getting one myself. Well, my Tangmere was a right pain when I first got it. The, uh, the driving gear, yeah, that's right. The driving gear had uh, split and so she wouldn't run. So actually my Tangmere was a right nuisance to get running, but uh, now that she's fine, uh, she is she is good. I can recommend her highly. And uh, Dot Can Pilot sent uh, sent me a, a super chat for Donald and Douglas back to back, please, with a green coach in between, please. Yeah, I should be able to do that. As I said, I don't know whether it'll be today or not, but um, if it's not, I will get around to it at some point. And also Tom Jensen, thank you very much for your support uh, and everybody, but especially you, Tom, because I know you've uh, you've sent some in the past. So thank you very much. Uh, of course, everyone who sent a super chat today is going to get in with a chance of winning their own Bullman mod. But anyway, let's uh, let's talk about this model then. Now, I mentioned briefly earlier on that I thought this was an interesting model, and obviously <laughs> it's covered in this tissue paper at the moment, so you can't see much about it. But what's interesting about this is that it was first released, let me see the date here, in 1976, so that's over 40 years ago. And the interesting thing is that Hornby, well, it was trying Hornby, I suppose, at the time, but then Hornby continued to release this for many, many years. It was released for um, over 35 years, in fact, until 2011. That's the last one I can find. Uh, so over that time, just like the original trying B12, actually, it developed a lot, it changed over time, and and this is one of the later ones that I picked up at a train fair. I'll talk about this. But if anyone's interested, this is what it looked like in 1976 when the model first came out. Uh, I'm not going to be able to give you much of a close-up here, but as you can tell, the detail is very basic, and in fact, the detail doesn't change much um, between this version and the uh, the more modern version that I'm going to show today, except the painted detail changes a lot, as we're going to see. If you if you look at this one, you can see the lining. You can tell from that distance, really. The lining on it is very basic, and also the tops of the tanks are all done in green, and in fact, most of it, except the, uh, the smoke box and the back of the cab here, is just done in the green. But uh, anyway, that's the way it started. That's the way it looked originally. You can see the most to there uh, taking up the cab so no cab detail but uh, it was a classic and people loved it when it first came out and it was good quality you know you can mess around with this I'm holding it like this and nothing's dropping off it it's a classic and uh, that's why I suppose that's why it lasted for 35 years so what I'm going to do is I'm going to thank all of my super chats from uh, from today so far and then what I'm going to do is get on to unboxing it for you and uh, we'll do a little bit of a review so let's have a look at people from the March 11th uh, so we've have 
Christopher, Dot Can Pilot, Aidan Lido, The Ugly Duck Man, Jake Darling, Cavan Cullen, Lee Molson, Sonic Crafter, hashtag Speedcraft. I didn't notice you on the chat, so thank you very much. Taggart Double O, um, who asked for the Bankman Edward with Hornby, Hornby Clerestory Coaches, Blood and Custard if possible, uh, if not the Teak ones. So, yep, yeah, okay, I'll get round to that. And finally, well, not finally, Tom Jensen and also Dot Can Pilot again. So, all, all of you guys who are in there so far with the Super Chats, thank you so much. You know I appreciate it. And each and every one of you are helping to keep this channel alive, which, of course, is very important to me. Okay, so thank you for that. Let's move on now and get this thing unboxed. And you might have noticed this coupling because I, uh, I flashed it on the screen earlier by mistake. And the coupling is there so I know where to put this box down so that it's in the middle of the screen. <laughs> so there you go. Anyway, so I bought this at the train fair and I doubt you're going to be able to read this from here. But the price on it is £39.75. And, uh, you know, that's not a bad price. Although, actually, I bought quite a lot from that seller. And uh, in the end, I think I ended up getting it for more like £30, which is a lot more like it. So uh, really quite a good bargain. Now, the box isn't in great condition. You can see that it's slightly, um, you know, tired, a little bit ruined. And unfortunately, there isn't any, uh, let well, there's nothing, there's no sleeve inside the box. So we haven't got anything on the end of the box. Uh, so I can't really tell you very much about it, this in terms of the R number and that sort of thing. Although if you're interested, head on to Hornby Guide and you can find out exactly what this is uh, once I show you the, the, uh, the running number. But for now then, obviously, there's not a lot to see from the outside of the box. So uh, let's get this out and I will show you uh, how this model has developed since it was first released in the uh, mid to late 70s. So here it is. Now, unlike my Triang version, this particular one, if I can get it out, is, uh, is not in the LNER green. It's actually in a British Railways green, and presumably this particular model was based on uh, the locomotive as it would have looked in probably the early BR period. So we're talking 1948, probably 1949. It's still very much got its LNER colour scheme, but of course it now says British Railways on the tender, which suggests that they uh, hadn't quite gotten around to painting this up into the British Railways livery. But uh, you know, you can see that the painting is a lot more modern on this, and in fact, it makes it look unrecognisable in comparison to the uh, to the old Triang version and I will do a little bit of a side to side comparison of the of the two very different models but also the same tooling they are the same tooling it's got a different chassis of course it's got a more modern chassis and the paintwork as I say makes it look uh, basically unrecognizable when I bought this I didn't realize I already had this um, but uh, actually I don't regret it. I think it's great. So anyway, there she is, the the J83 in the British Railways livery. And if anyone wants to look this one up, it's running number uh, 68472. So there's that. Now, what I'm going to do is, as usual, I'm going <laughs> to, you'll have to bear with me because obviously this is live and uh, things don't go quite as smoothly as they do when they're live. But, uh, well, we'll try it. So what I'm going to do is give you a little bit of history on the J83. Uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about them, and then, as I always do in reviews, I'm going to give you, well, I'm going to try my best to give you a close-up look at her on the white background, although, really, I can't really give you brilliant close-ups because, um, you know, my cameras aren't capable of doing that. But uh, anyway, here's a little bit of info, then, on the, the J83. So, the J83 started life on the NBR, which is the North British Railway, when they were first introduced in 1900 to the design of Matthew Holmes. In the early days of the NBR, the class was actually known as the NBR D-Class, and it was used for short-distance freight and shunting duties. The class utilised the successful Stevenson's valve gear, which of course was hidden from view between the wheels, which is why you can't see it on the model, and between 1900 and 1901, 40 of the class were built in total, and of course from 1923, the class passed into LNER ownership, where they continued to work until 1948, when they became part of the British Railways fleet. From here, the class began to be withdrawn and by 1962, the final member of the class had been removed from service and replaced with diesels. Sadly, all members of the class were scrapped, none were preserved, but they're still remembered since all but three of the J83s managed to cover over one million miles each during their working lifetimes. Triang's J83 model, or I suppose it would have been Hornby by this time, surfaced in 1976, and for 35 years this model has appeared in the Hornby range with several different liveries and several different running numbers. The last version to be released I think was in 2011, and she was in BR Black with a running number 68450 I think, and she was DCC fitted. And of course since then the chassis has been updated uh, over time too, to include the more up-to-date Hornby 060 chassis, which as you can see well as you will see runs absolutely beautifully 
Okay, so there she is against the white background, and I have to apologise at how frankly naff this scene looks. But obviously I'm just doing this with a webcam, I've not got a proper camera to look at this thing. Um, but I will do my best to describe the details to you, and uh, really I think you'll get a basic idea of what this thing looks like, even though this shot isn't fantastic. And as always, I will do a little bit of a discussion with you guys on what you think about this and I'll also, if I've got time, do a little bit of a comparison against the old trying version. So anyway, when we talk about the detail, obviously the detail on this Loco is extremely basic. There's not much in the way of separately fitted work or anything just because of the age of the tooling. Although, of course, compared with my Triang version, which you can see just here, if I can show it, the paintwork has come on leaps and bounds. So you can see here that the, the lining is quite sophisticated. You've got uh, the double white banding with the black stripes inside it. If you look on top of the tanks, you can see that they are now done in uh, in black, as well as the running board and the, uh, the smoke box and the cab and everything like that. And obviously all of the lettering is of a much higher standard. You can see the British Railways text is very nicely done there as is the uh, the 68472 on the uh, coal bunker there. And also things just like the, the lining on the wheels, look, you've got a white lining on the wheels, beautiful red lining on the steps as well. All of this just comes from the same tooling. They haven't added any more detail to it. They've just painted it up. And to be honest, as I say, I, I really think it makes it look unrecognizably different. Let me put the two side by side here so that you can see it. So if you look at them like this, you can you can definitely see the similarities. Look, all the pipe work is pretty much the same. Um, you've got uh, similar sort of, you, you know, obviously everything is pretty much similar. The, uh, the whistles and safety valves are still made of metal on both, and I think they might even still be the same part. And if I show you the, the ends, you can see that the buffer beams are basically the same, even the Triang version has a gap here in the buffer beam to have a vacuum pipe fitted. And again, both models have uh, metal buffers, except if I move this back a bit so that they focus a bit better, <laughs> except the uh, the later Hornby version has got sort of shiny metal buffers, which uh, look really quite attractive, I think. Um, yeah, the, uh, the Triang version does have metal buffers, although they're sort of uh, quite uh, murky looking. I suppose I could polish them up if I wanted to, but I haven't done anything about that as of now. Obviously, the cab detail on this Loco is pretty well, it's non-existent really. Originally, this Loco would not have had um, any cab detail because the motor was in there. These days, they've updated it so that the motor sits a little bit further forward. The cab area is actually empty, but unfortunately, there's still no cab detailing inside there. And as you can also see, uh, there's no glazing in the windows. The windows have been outlined now in the, the, white, the white lining as they have around the back, but uh, no glazing or anything like that. And the other thing I should probably point out is the fact that she does have a couple of traction tires, which I don't like. You generally, there are pain to maintain and that sort of thing but it does mean as we're going to see that she she's a very capable puller which is of course what we all like to see so you guys let me know in the chat what do you think what do you like about this what do you dislike about this um, obviously I uh, there's a little bit of a delay between uh, me saying things and the chat coming through so I'll wait a second but as quick as you can let me know what you like about this uh, let me know what you think and uh, we'll have a bit of a talk about it I reckon so yep let's do that right now let me move this camera back onto me then. There we go. So yeah, it's a classic. Let me grab it. Shall I grab it? I'll grab them both. <laughs> right. So there she is. And once again, side by side, here's the, uh, the Triang version, which uh, it shocks me. It really does that these are the same tooling and yet they look so different. I suppose on camera now they don't really. They look very similar. But uh, even the tone of the LNER green is better on the, on the later version. They've obviously refined it quite a lot. But it's amazing how such a basic uh, model, a basic moulding, can be made to look so beautiful and modern. I do think it's beautiful. It's, it's not detailed by any stretch of the imagination, but it's pretty good. Anyway, what do people think? Uh, people are saying it's good. Um, oh, I didn't see who that was. They disappeared. Um, L's trains, sorry, L train says I like the locomotive. It does look good. Yeah, it does look good. It's not, you know, it's not going to win any awards for its detail, but uh, for thirty quid, what are you going to do, really? Um, who thinks this tank engine looks like Ryan? Yeah, well, Ryan in real life would have appeared in similar liveries to this. Of course, uh, Ryan was based on an N2, so the N2 is an, a 062, I believe, and this is definitely an 060 tank. But uh, sort of, yeah, certainly a similar kind of size. Um, I suppose the tooling 
would have been developed at the same sort of time, especially for the Hornby one, um, which would have been Airfix and Mainline as it started out, which was also 1970s, I believe. So yeah, there's a couple of reasons why this might remind you of Ryan. Uh, Fred's Train says, can I have a shout out, please, as I'm eight subs away for 100. Wow, that's, that's impressive, Fred. Congratulations, my, my first 100 subscribers was definitely the hardest to get. And I can assure you it gets easier after that. Well, it did for me anyway. So well done. Um, who is the who? Who is its basis of Thomas? Uh, the basis of Thomas was the E2. I don't know if that's the question you're asking, but uh, there we go. Full steamer said. Uh, full steamer ahead says good price. Yeah, I thought thirty quid was all right for this. Although to be honest, I didn't look that up on eBay, so you might even be able to get it cheaper online. Who knows? But yeah, I thought for thirty quid, maybe the thirty-nine that it was priced up for was a little bit steep. But uh, I'm pretty sure the seller knocked it down to closer to thirty for me. So I was I was more than happy with that. Laserjet, hello, Laserjet says I think it's cute in a way. Yeah, it's cute. And the thing is, you can you can play with this thing. I, I, don't, I mean, obviously people won't like to hear me saying play. I don't mean chuck it around, well I'll try not to drop it, but uh, you can, you know, you can shunt with it, you can take it off with your hands, you don't have to think, oh can I touch that pipe, oh can I, can I put my hands on the running board, you haven't got to worry about any of that, you can hold it however you like, and as long as you're careful you're not going to break the thing. So, you know, it's just worry-free running, and I, I really do like that, it's a, it's a good, it's a good train. A good train. It's a good loco. Shooting models and more says 14 double X. Can you run? Yeah, the 14 double X hasn't run for a while. So if you want to uh, super chat me for that, I will certainly do it. Adam Rushton says, hi Sam, I might not make it for next week's live stream because I will be at the Seven Valley Railway Steam Gala. Well, I know which one I'd rather be at, so I hope you have a nice time. It sounds very good, and don't forget to take some pictures. That's going to be really good. Um, Trainfan2006 says, is it really strong, Sam? Yes, it's extremely strong. Um... Just trying to think. It's it's noticeably much lighter than the older Triang version, but the Triang version has uh, really only two of its six wheels touch the track, which means that it hasn't got a massive amount of traction. Although it's not bad, it is pretty strong. But obviously, this one with the traction tyres pulls a lot more than it should, being the weight it is. And actually, I don't know how much it could pull, but it can easily pull as much as some of my Pacifics can. Mallard, for example, pulls similar amounts of coaches. And how many? I'm going to be running four coaches with her, so that's going to be no problem. But we'll keep an eye out. We'll we'll have a look at her on Gordon's Hill and see if she yet uh, slow down, uh, see if she slows down or wheel slips or anything, and that will tell us whether she's underpowered or not. But uh, I don't think she is. Um, Aaron Denny says hi. Fred's trains again. Oh, well, he sent that again, saying, "Can he have a shout out for his uh, 100 subs?" I already talked about that. Train fan 2006 is asking, "Can I run the B12?" Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think I've run that for a while actually, and I love the B12s. They would run nicely with those, wouldn't they really? So if, you, if someone wants to uh, super chat me for the B12, I will certainly do that. Do you have any others in different colours, says Glenn Husted. I think that's how you say it. I don't personally, but I know that Hornby have done a BR Black version, for example, um, and I think that was the last one they did actually in 2011. I think that one was the, uh, the DCC fitted one in uh, BR Black, but uh, it does look nice in BR Black, I must admit. Okay, what shall we do then um, I think we will go on to some wall of fame stuff so I'm gonna move these locos out of the way we'll do a bit of wall of fame stuff I'll show you some photos that people have been sending in and then we'll have a little bit of a break while I put these onto the line and sort out some more of my uh, super chats and then we'll get it running and see what it's like so anyway let me grab some of these super chats super chats no these are definitely not super chats these are wall of fame photos so here we have two unlikely locos next to each other from Peter, Peter C, it looks like we've got the crab um, there and some other loco, not absolutely sure what the other loco is but it's running number 1705 so if anyone knows what that is, let, I might as well guess, I'm going to guess it's a, hmm, a class f uh, 56, <laughs> I don't really know. Uh, goodness knows with that one, but it looks very nice anyway. This one's one I like. This is from Lucas, who actually drew one himself. Well, I assume he drew it. It looks fantastic. Very old-fashioned looking uh, steam locomotive there with a couple of poor looking um, <laughs> crew on board. Not got a lot of shelter on there, but thank you for drawing that, Lucas. That's fantastic, and it's going to look great on my wall. Then Justin sent me this, this beautifully streamed line. What I'm going to guess is an American diesel, so thank you for sending that. I love it. And DM... 
HD Trains sent me this. This is more of a modern DMU, but I like it very much, so thank you for sending that. Beautiful livery on those. I, I wouldn't mind own, owning one of those in double O gauge, so thank you for that. That looks fantastic. Uh, then we've got uh, L Trains, who's been in the in the chat today, so uh, there you go. What's this? 92220. We all recognise that, so that's, uh, that's going to be at the NRM. That's Evening Star, I believe. Actually, you can just about see her nameplate on there, so thank you for sending that. I don't think we've got any pictures of Evening Star on the Wall of Fame. I can't remember off the top of my head, but I don't think so. Oh, and here's one I like. So this one's from Train Spotter 2003. This is one of my favourites. It's the Bullet Pacific, and this one is 92 Squadron, so that, I suppose, will make it a Battle of Britain class rather than uh, West Country. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's lovely. Can't wait for that to go on the wall. Yeah, I love those. Thank you for sending that. And then, finally, from Stovell Productions, we've got a little bit of a montage of some uh, not-British-looking engines. I would suggest that they're probably American, but don't hold me to that. Most of them look like they are anyway and uh, they're mostly very attractive looking things so uh, thank you Stowell Productions for sending that and of course if you uh, if you sent in some Wall of Fame stuff this week and I haven't showed it already don't worry because I've got another pile of them here to do later on so uh, I'll get to that anyway what I'm going to do then is I'm going to go to a little bit of a break just for five minutes I'm going to set this up on the track I've got another super chat from Luke and Hagman from last week and I'm also going to have to, well, I'm going to want to set up another Super Chat from this week. So I'm going to do that briefly before I go, just so that I haven't got to look this up uh, while we're on a break, because I want the break to be as quick as I possibly uh, can make it. So um, the first one we got today was from Dot Can Pilot, who wants to see the 4575 with the Excalibur coaches. Now that's interesting because I, I don't know where I keep... Oh, I can see them. Yeah, I know where my coaches are. I had a bit of a panic there because I couldn't remember off the top of my head where I uh, left my Excalibur Express coaches. But I can do that. That's absolutely fine. So don't go anywhere. Go and get yourself a cup of tea or something like that. Go and give your mum a hug if she's anywhere nearby because it is Mother's Day. So uh, don't forget her tonight. But uh, I'll be right back in just a few minutes. We'll get this uh, beautiful uh, J83 running. See what she's like. Do some slow speed, in fact. That should be fun. And uh, I'll be right back. So, uh, yep. Yeah, See you all in a second, don't go anywhere, and I'll be back very, very soon. All right, folks, well, that's all sorted out. Blimey, I'm on top of things today. Actually, if I'm, if I'm honest with you, you know when I did that information video for the, uh, for the Class J83, I, um, I snuck down to the front and got off the original request, so it didn't take me long this time. Anyway, hope you're all doing okay. Um, in the first half, I showed my modern Hornby J83. This is the older one, but I showed the, the, the later one. And uh, right now, she's gone down to the front, and I need to adjust this camera because I couldn't see how it was adjusted to start with. But uh, first of all, we have, of course, the J83, who's going to be running with some Pullman coaches. In fact, the same Pullman coaches that ran in the first half of the video. And then, as you can see, on the middle line, we've got the much-requested uh, E2 tank engine, which was requested last week by Lucad Hagman. And she's got a couple of Pullman coaches. And then on the inside line, I'm going to be running the 4575 class, which was requested by Dot Can Pilot. And he also asked for me to run it with uh, the Excalibur Express coaches, which I have done. And a massive thank Thank you again to Charles Curtis, who I think donated last week, um, but he's donated again right now. So thank you, Charles. I, I do appreciate that. And in fact, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through all of the Super Chats from this week just to thank everybody so far. And as soon as I've done that, we'll get on to uh, testing this loco. I hope it's going to work. She's not run for a while, so keep your fingers crossed and let's hope she is going to work. But uh, anyway, so we're on March the 11th. Uh, so again, thank you to Dot Can Pilot, Aiden Ludo, The Ugly Duck Man, Jake Darling, K Van Cullen, Lee Molson, Sonic Crafter, hashtag Speedcraft. Always trips me up that one, but I'll get used to saying it. Thank you again for all your support. Tagart00, Tom Jensen, Dot Can Pilot again, Ollie Turf 26 Camille's Model Railway, who says, can you run the BR Blue A4 Golden Eagle with some blue with some Pullman coaches? Absolutely, Camille. Thank you very much for that. I will do that at some point for you. As I always say, if it's this week, good. Hopefully it will be. If I get uh, too many in this week, it might have to move over to next week, but I will do it for you, absolutely. And finally, Charles Curtis, who uh, who just got in. So I think we're basically ready to go. Let's, uh, let's see how this runs. Now, you'll notice that quite deliberately, I haven't connected her to her coaches yet, or coupled her to her coaches yet, as the term is, uh, so that we can see her slow speed performance. Now, again, you'll have to bear with me with this because I can't show you a very close-up shot of her doing slow speed. But um, from what I remember, she is absolutely superb at slow speed so I'm going to turn her up on the controller now and we'll see what she does and amazingly 
I don't know if you'll even be able to tell on the camera, but she is moving forwards. I mean, it's just incredible. Let me set her backwards. Oh, she has. She's gone and stalled now. Let's move her back. There we go. I mean, just look at that. And you won't be able to hear anything. And that's not because of the microphone. That's because she's absolutely silent. She really is quiet. Uh, speed her up slightly. Let's put her over the express point and see how she does. Okay, so she got over the express point, and that's really impressive. And as you know, she's got a traction tire on there, so pulling just four coaches really shouldn't be a problem for her, but uh, you never know until you try. So let's get her started, the, uh, the J83, and just look at that livery. I love that British Railways green, which is really sort of Doncaster green, I suppose. But uh, there she goes. Yeah, managing the Pullman coach is just fine. We'll catch up with her in a moment and see how she does up Gordon's Hill. But for now, two more requests then. We've got the E2 tank engine with some lovely southern coaches. There she goes. And of course, the, the Backman 4575 class, which hasn't done much running so far this year. Uh, but she is doing today. So there she goes with my Excalibur Express coaches. And for now then, let's enjoy a running session with these. And I will also give you a little bit of... Um, well, some of my ratings and things. Oh, we've just missed the uh, the E2. I'll give you some of my ratings and things for the uh, the J83. But there's the Backman 4575 tank engine. Beautiful um, Great Western tank engine. I nearly said LNER there. No idea why. So there goes the J83 looking absolutely gorgeous. Shall we follow her around for a second? Yes, I think we better. So there she goes, just out of sight there, past the church. We'll jump around to the front now and see if we can see her go past. She should be here any second. What do you think, everybody? Do you like this? Uh, Henry341 Adventure says, Sam, please shout out. And Lucas Nolan says, snow in America. Does that mean, have you got some snow over there in America? If you have, keep safe, man. That's, that, snow's, that snow's rough. We had some real nasty snow a few weeks back. Uh, Jerry the Fat Bird says, Sam, can you run the Black Five, please? Yeah, if you want to send me uh, a super chat to run the Black Five, I would be more than happy to do that for you. At some point, it might not be today because I'm, I have, uh, I've got quite a few requests still to do today. But uh, yeah, sure, whatever. So there we go. Let's follow some of these other locos then. Let's see where the others have got to. There goes the E2 right now. Looking absolutely fantastic. Not sure what's happened to the 4575. I can't see her anywhere. Oh, yes, I can. In fact, she's just gone, be, uh, she's just gone past the church cam. But if I uh, stick around here and keep an eye out just uh, behind the bookcase, you might see her go by. Track's looking a little bit wonky at the other end there. I don't know how that happened. Hopefully, everything will be all right. I didn't realise that. Trainfan2006 says, Can I have a shout-out? And can you run Percy and Spencer? Yeah, sure. Again, if you want to super chat me, I will do that. No problem. Right, we're going to see the 4575. Yes, there she goes underneath the camera. Fantastic. Anyway then, so shall I give you some of my ratings and rankings? Yeah, sure. Right. So, anyway, here are my ratings then for the, the J83. So, first of all, detail, 2 out of 5. The painted detail is absolutely beautiful, but as you can clearly see, the moulded detail and separately fitted parts, or really lack of them, leave a little bit to be desired, but it's an old tooling, so we'll forgive it that. The power, though, is pretty good. She's got that traction tyre, and yes, she's not that heavy, and I prefer generally that Locos weigh a little bit more and do away with the traction tyre, but generally it's not a big complaint, so I've given her a 4 out of 5 there. Slow speed, though, as you saw, fine over the express points and absolutely snail's, space, uh, snails pace slow. It was ridiculous how good the slow speed was, so it can't be any other than 5 out of 5 there. And also, as I was saying earlier, the quality is just superb. You can handle this, you can touch it. Again, that's partly because it doesn't have a lot of detail, but really, when it's quality that you're after, this uh, this logo delivers. And finally, value. I don't really know the RRP of these, but certainly the £30 or thereabouts that I paid was very good, so uh, more than happy with the value there. So overall then, that is 8.06 out of 10. Quite a respectable score, really, for a loco with such little detail. But obviously, it's the slow speed and the, the performance, really, that uh, that drags her up there. So let's put her into the rankings then. And there she is at fifth, just above the Backman Mavis and below the 4F. Really quite a, a respectable score, I would say, there. Not bad at all. Okay, let's go back to them then. Oh, we've just missed the 4575. Uh, where is the J83? Oh, there goes the E2, also known as Thomas, of course. <laughs> and there goes the J83. Very, very lovely. And I think she suits the Pullman coaches quite nice. I think if I was a posh person, I'd be more than happy to ride behind her uh, on a 
I don't know, on the Heritage Railway or even back in the day. That would be fantastic. Anyway, so that was that. I think we'll get these to come to a stop now, shall we, at the front? And I'll stop them at the front so that a little bit later on I can come and uh, queue up some of my other Super Chats. But uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you were impressed by her. She's quite a modest little tank engine, but actually uh, not to be underestimated in any way. She, uh, she really does do a good job. So that's it. Uh, you've seen the Hornby J83, and it really is lovely. And uh, we're just waiting now for the Batman 4575 tank, which is a 262 tank, I believe. It's, it's a really beautiful thing. Uh, she's never pulled these coaches before, so I think you'll all agree that she deserves a round of applause for that. There we go. She's never pulled those before, but she's done so without a problem. And again, she's quite a good heavy loco, so she's got no problems uh, pulling those at all. So, yep, that was fantastic. Loved seeing her. And of course, thank you to everybody who uh, who suggested, well, to the guy that suggested it, really. Who was it? Uh, was it Dot Can Pilot? Thank you very much for suggesting that. That was fantastic. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that, folks. Let's do some, uh, let's do some chat now. Uh, I will see how you guys are doing. If you want to send me some questions, feel free to. I don't mind answering questions as long as they're not too personal of course um let's see mark corner says one lap until green what does that mean oh okay i think he's talking about f1 i assume david train time says can i have a shout out please sam mate or oh, well, he called me mate so he gets his shout out there we go uh ali the panda says you deserve a billion subs i get a lot of people saying that but to be honest i'm nearly at twenty thousand subs and uh, even though that's not a lot by some standards to me that is absolutely amazing and of course i've only got you guys to thank for that um, what I will do is if we get to 20,000 before my final stream, I will do something special. So if you want to see me do something special, I don't know what it is yet, mind you, but uh, if you want to see me do something special, if you haven't subscribed already, get subscribed and we'll see if we can, uh, we can make it up to 20,000. So let's see what we can do with that. Uh, we've got two weeks to do it. I think we're about 400 subs away. So it's ambitious, but it's doable. Let's see what happens. Ali the Panda says, please, I love you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Henry341 Adventure says, Sam, please shout out. So a lot of people asking for shout out, uh, shout outs. Um, hey Sam, can you unbox the King Arthur class? Sir Gilmere, please. Uh, if you want to see me unbox a King Arthur, I believe the White Pullman train pack had one. That one was Sir Levine. Um, but uh, yeah, if you want to see me unbox that, you can check out that review if you like. I don't have that particular one, unfortunately. But uh, you know, if you want to see it, uh, that's the review to check out. And actually, if you like train packs and things on another subject, uh, keep an eye out on the channel because I'm going to be doing some more train pack related videos soon. Burger Film says, what is your favourite loco? I bet I answer that one every week. But uh, it is, of course, the, the West Country class slash uh, Battle of Britain. I love those. Uh, Great Western Will says, are you putting your station on your layout? And I assume you mean the, the Railway Children's Station. Yes, uh, I think what I'll do is, if you can see the station in the background there, uh, I haven't tried this yet, but if the Railway Children's Station fits on that platform and it looks, you know, reasonably presentable there, then I think that's where I'll put it. If the platform's a bit too narrow for the the, uh, the railway children station, I'll have to rethink that and uh, find somewhere else to put it. But uh, for the time being, uh, yeah, that's what I'm planning to do. So hopefully that will be okay. Um, Sam, please run Mallard, says Network Rail, RBL, XKEL. <laughs> what a name. Yeah, I'll run Mallard from time to time. So if you want to see her, just uh, keep your eye on the channel and you'll probably see her. Uh, Lucas Nolan says, Sam, do you have any American models? Uh, yes, I do have a few, not many. I think only three or four locos and quite a few rolling stock models, but uh, not a massive amount. Uh, and then Pal Drummer says, hello, everybody. So hello, Pal Drummer. Hope you're having fun. And uh, best uh, Ace Flying Scotsman says, best channel ever. Please can I have a shout out? Well, since you were so nice, yes, of course you can. Okay, so what we will do is we'll now look at some more Wall of Fame stuff. And then what I will do is I will set up some more uh, of my requests and we'll get those done. So for now then, we're starting off with, oh, this one, I know who this is. This one is Callum, SDJR 7F88. I think actually he did send me one already, but uh, because this is his very impressive trench layout, I think. Yeah, that looks like it. Is it? Yeah, I can see some uh, some uh, war war people down here, some soldiers. I think that's the technical name for them, rather than war people. But uh, I thought because it's such an impressive layout, I thought I, I don't mind uh, showing that. So there it is. That is Callum's. Um, I think it's a World War One layout, I'd guess. Although don't don't quote me on that. I might be wrong. Looking at the locos, it is, but I'm not absolutely sure. Lucas H said, sent in this, which is a, a shot of his layout. I really like the look of that. So thank you, Lucas, for sending that in. That looks fantastic. Jeremy N sent me a picture of an American loco, and I think this loco was also on that collage I looked at uh, earlier on. 
Uh, I can't see where it is now, but I think that was on there. So thank you, Jeremy. I love the look of that. I'd love to get one. It looks a bit like Jupiter. I don't know if it's the same sort of type or not, but it looks a bit like it. I think that was a 440. Uh, Kieran J sent me this. That is three of his engines uh, sitting side by side next to an engine shed. So that's very nice. Quite dramatic, that is. So I like that. Thank you, Kieran. Uh, Jacob sent me this. It looks like it's an articulated loco. It looks like a, a big boy or something similar to that. So thank you, Jacob, for sending that. I always love seeing those, and I'll put that up on the wall. And then Jake sent me this lovely picture of Tornado 601. Is it 601? 6-3, yeah. <laughs> there she is, beautiful tornado, this time in looks like maybe LNR Green, yeah, I think so. So that's lovely, thank you for sending me that in, always like to see a nice picture of tornado. Tyler T sent me a logo that again I don't recognise but I assume that's on his layout so uh, I love seeing that. Thank you Tyler for that, yep, yeah, I'm sure a lot of people will know what that is. And then Sean sent me this, which looks like his layout on the floor, with some maybe some Lego decorations. Not too sure, but there is a little bit of scenery going on there, starting to go up, which is nice. Uh, can't see any engines on the track. Oh, yes, I can. There's a little Highlander sort of 040 Caledonian loco on there, so that's awesome. So thanks, Sean, for sending that. That looks absolutely fantastic. What I will do then is I will set up some more Super Chat requests, so uh, give me a second to look these up and it will find out who's next in the queue to have a request run. So let's take a look, where are we? So the last one I did was the 4575. So the Ugly Duck Man wanted to see me do some panniers with Pullmans. So I can do, I'll tell you what, I'll put some of the trying panniers together for you. So yeah, I can do that and I've got Pullmans out so that's fine. Uh, Jake Darling wanted to see the P-Class, um, is that what he wants to see? Uh, with some of the four-wheeled coaches. So yep, yeah, Jake D, I'll put the P-Class with some four-wheeled. And he asked for red ones. I think I've only got red ones so I shouldn't get confused with that. And then K Van Cullen wants to see Thomas. Thomas. Okay, let's do that then. I'll do this live just because, um, you know, you, you guys might as well not sit through another break. And I know some people quite like to see this sort of thing because I don't do it too often. So without any further ado, let me get those on. And what I might do is do two lots if I can. And uh, hopefully that'll be interesting for you. So let's do this. So what we first need to do is sort out some panniers. Uh, we've got the Pullmans already, so they're going to have to go on the outside line. So let me grab the J83 very carefully. There we go. And I'll grab some panniers. I'll put two of my trying panniers on together. And in fact, my trying panniers are twins. Uh, they have the same running number. And basically, they're absolutely the same. To be honest with you, I don't know why, I don't know why I've got two of them. Um, I can't remember what happened, really. But for some reason, I decided to buy another. <laughs> I can't remember why. Obviously, the price must have just been right. And I thought, I love these so much that I'm going to buy another. But uh, there we go. So there's one. And if anyone's interested, the running number is 8751 on these. So, uh, yep, yeah, there we go. Two panniers. Oh, in fact, that one is going to have to go at the front. Because, bizarrely, that one doesn't have a front coupling. I don't know why. Okay, that should be okay. Let's check they work, shall we? Hopefully they will. Oh yes, they're raring to go. Okay, so on the middle line, what was it? The P-Class with some of my four-wheeled coaches. So what I'll do is I'll just move the Backman 4575 out of the way so that I can grab the E2 without knocking anything else off. So let me do that. And I, to be honest with you, I can't wait until Hatton's release the rest of their P-Class. Um, in fact, I think I'm going to be waiting a little bit longer because I've got the SECR Green version on order. But uh, I can't wait to see that because I love SECR Green. But uh, the one I'm going to run today is the SECR Grey version, which is very, very lovely, don't get me wrong. Uh, number 754. Let me put her out. Uh, which way shall we have a run? Let's go the same way as the uh, the E2 was. So there's the P-Class, and I bet she looks very tiny on the camera there. And I think Jake, was it Was it Jake? I think it was Jake that asked for her. He wanted to see me run some of my four-wheeled coaches. So let's have four of those, shall we? Yep, four four-wheeled coaches. And then I can carry those in one trip. So here we go, Jake. Hopefully you're going to like seeing that. And what I'm going to just do is I'm going to briefly run back to the computer just to make sure that it's still on and that the sound is still working and everything because I don't want to go too long without checking it uh, just in case something goes wrong, of course, and you're all watching a, a blank screen or something, I don't know. So 
It's probably not necessary. I'm probably being a little bit paranoid, but uh, I think it's worth doing. But anyway, hope that's all right. Was it Jake? Yes, it was Jake who wanted to see that. So there we go. That's two of the three trains set up. And yeah, everything's okay. Uh, railway siding says, not sure if I've ever seen a class 68 on your layout. Um, to be honest, there'll be other people that know that better than I do. I don't think I've got a class 68, but I might be wrong. I'm not absolutely sure. Um, but I would like one. If I do have one, it won't be a super detailed one. I, I know that. I know I haven't got a super detailed one. But uh, I may have a Lima one or something like that, if such a thing exists. Um, I couldn't tell you, really. I can tell you basically what steam locos I've got, but when it comes to diesels, I'm not so uh, I'm not so hot on those, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, I need to I need to collect a few more diesels really when I get around to it. But uh, not right now. I'm still I'm still into my steam at the moment. Right, let me put these coaches out of the way. Let me just step over here. And I think the last one was to see Thomas, wasn't it? So what shall we do? I think a lot of people when I did the shunting session were upset because they didn't see the Hornby Thomas. So let's pull the Hornby Thomas out and we'll, make, we'll let him make an appearance. So here he is, here's my Hornby Thomas. And what I'll do is I'll grab Annie and Clarabel and let him pull those. So be right back in just a second. Let me grab Annie and Clarabel if I can find them. I suppose I'm lucky really to have all this rolling stock to hand just immediately like this. Now, I always get confused. Well, not confused, but I always forget the formation of Annie and Clarabel. Now they're always said Annie and Clarabel. So does that mean that uh, Annie goes at the front and Clarabel goes at the back? But obviously Annie has got uh, quite a, a worried look on her face, which I think always means that she's sort of looking into Thomas's bottom, which of course would cause the worrying look. And then I always thought Clarabel had a smiley face, so she's looking out the back, um, seeing the view. Um, I'm told that uh, when I do that, that Clarabel's facing the wrong way, so I won't do that. But uh, anyway, there's Annie and Clarabel with Thomas. Uh, I don't know why I started rambling about them there, but uh, let's get them going then. So there goes Thomas. Oh, he's a bit screechy. I think he's, uh, he might be ready for a service. There's the Hatton's P-Class, which just works faultlessly every time. Never had, I've not had to service her yet, and she's done a lot of running for me since I've had her. And there go the Pullmans with the panniers. So thank you folks for those. Let's have a few minutes watching those run. And of course, let me know what's been your favorite train of the day so far, if you'd like to. And we'll have a bit of a chat about that. Whoa, that didn't sound good. What was that? I just heard something dramatic happen. It was to do with the pannier train. So uh, I might actually go and have a look what that was. Sounded like they caught something on the side of the layout, but I don't know what. Can't see anything, but we'll uh, we'll follow it with the camera, and we'll see if we can uh, spot anything. So, everybody, keep a close eye out because I don't know what that was, and it scared me a bit. So we'll uh, we'll chase the pannier train, see if it makes any noise. Let's hope nothing goes wrong. It was near the bridge, I think. Nope, everything seems okay. Don't know what that was then. Oh, I don't like it when things like that happen. <laughs> We're okay though, I think everything's okay. Uh, Harry Todd Hunter says, Sam, how much have I missed? Well, you've missed quite a bit. We're basically nearly done now, but uh, not too much. Um, I, did, I did my review of the, uh, the J83. We've been running quite a lot of trains actually. I've been running all kinds of stuff, including these guys, so you're not missing these. These are still, uh, these are still going. And these were requested by Jake Darling, Cavan Cullen, and I forget who the last person was, but uh, thank you whoever it was who asked for the panniers and pullmans. Uh, I can double check. Uh, so that was the Ugly Duck Man that asked for those. So thank you for those, Ugly Duck Man. Uh, let's have another look. Oh, no, the bridge cam. Oh, we just missed the panniers. But what a good idea that is to do some uh, pannier double heading. That's fantastic. All right, then, let's find out what other people are saying. Um, Harry Todd Hunter says, vote anime or Harry Potter. Oh, it's got to be Harry Potter for me, but uh, I don't know whether that's controversial. Um, oh, NK Productions 2014 says, Thomas clipped the lights and is stuck behind the desk, Sam. Okay, is he? Oh, yeah, he is. Oh, is that the noise? How interesting. Yeah, is that the big noise then? Is that what caused the, uh, the clatter? <laughs> it must have been. 
Mind you, he's not crashed into anything. He's just caught on a wire or something. So yeah, I don't know what that was. Thank you for letting me know. I, I don't believe I. I can't believe I didn't spot that actually, but uh, I guess I didn't. Anyway, there goes Thomas. All better. I did scrape some wires to one side, so hopefully that's okay. Yeah, that's it. You see, I can't always concentrate on these things while I'm <laughs> while I'm talking. So thank you very much for letting me know about that. Um, favorite bullet Pacific says Adam Broomfield. Oh, I don't know. Um, let's say Canadian Pacific. There you go. I love that one. But to be honest, they're all good. I quite like Plymouth as well. My Plymouth model is very impressive. All right. Um, GWR, SR, LNER or LMS says Chazzy 898. I think for me it's Southern. I love Southern locomotives. Uh, they, those are definitely my favourite. Okay, we've got time. We've got four more minutes, but I don't mind running over a few minutes. Let's uh, run one or two more requests. Let's see what people have got for me. Right, uh, March the 11th, of course. So we've done Panniers and Pullmans. Jake Darling did it. Cavan. So, um, James and Edward, double head. Yep. Edward. Goods. Oh, that'll be interesting. I'll have to get some goods out. So that's Sonic Crafter, hashtag Speedcraft. Um, Tagart00 wants to see, let me write that down, uh, wants to see the Backman Edward with the Hornby Clerestory coaches. Plus Teaks. Oh, no, not Teaks, Clerestory, okay. Yeah, I can do that. And one more. Is there any more? Oh, yes, Dot Can Pilot. That's another one. Wanted to see Donald and Douglas. <laughs> Donald and Douglas back to back with a green coach in between. Blimey. With a green coach. Well, that sounds very, very bizarre. <laughs> right, let's go do it. Let's see if we can't get that sorted. Right. Let's see if I can get those panniers to stop before they run away. Okay. Stop the panniers. Stop the P-class. Right, I better, I better put some of this rolling stock away because it's uh, starting to get a little bit uh, over the top, isn't it? So I can put the Pullmans away, I think. No one else asked for Pullmans, did they? Just waiting for Thomas to come back. I think it was Nathaniel who spotted that Thomas was stuck. So uh, thank you for letting me know. For some reason, I didn't notice that and I didn't realise that Thomas was no longer uh, going past on his rounds. So sorry about that, Thomas, if you were struggling there. <laughs> Right, I'm going to just take these Pullman coaches back, and while I'm at it, I'll grab a green coach, I think it was, for Donald and Douglas. So let me do that. I think I'll be able to find a nice southern green coach for them. What an interesting idea. Did, this, did that scenario then with Donald and Douglas back-to-back, uh, -back, did that happen in, uh, in the show or in a story or something like that? Uh, that sounds very strange. It's a very strange thing to, to ask for, but uh, I assume there's, there's a reason for it. <laughs> I hope there's a reason for it, and otherwise you've uh, you've lost your mind, I think. But uh, anyway, so we've got a green coach there. I'll stick that out when I've got Donald and Douglas. Just very carefully put the P-class to one side so I don't crush that one. That's one I definitely don't want to crush. Let's move these uh, red wagons out the way, and we will grab some goods. I think we needed some goods for one of those requests. So it's not going to be a big goods train, I'm afraid, because... Um, you know, I'm a bit pressed for time now, but I'll grab six wagons and I'll grab six big wagons. Right, so I've chosen some LMS milk wagons. So there are those. Let me move Thomas out the way. Thomas and Annie and Clarabel. Grab him. I'll put Thomas next to James so they can have a bit of a conversation before they get put away. And okay, what locos did we need then? So first of all, we needed James and Edward doing goods. Oh, so we need James. Okay, and it's gonna need to be the, uh, the Hornby Edward because the Backman Edward has been uh, taken up by someone else. So there's James. I believe he's supposed to be double heading with Edward. So I'll grab Edward. All right. Who wants to go at the front? I think we will let Edward go at the front. There we go. See if I can put him on there. Okay, of course these two should be quite evenly matched in terms of speed because they've got the same mechanism. And they're supposed to have a good strain, I think, so I'll put some of these on. And as I said, these are the LMS milk vans. 
Uh, they actually have six wheels on them rather than just four. And at the centre set of wheels, quite interestingly, is articulated so uh, they can go around fairly tight curves. And with them being quite old models, uh, that's quite essential because curves in those days were a lot tighter than they are today. Uh, you saw a lot of first radius and a lot of second radius back in those days in the, uh, I suppose, 70s. I assume it will be 70s when these were built. So a lot of first radius about in those days. Never tried these on first radius, I don't think, but uh, I assume they would work just fine. But uh, there we go. So there's Edward and James pulling a little bit of a good strain there together. Uh, hopefully those two will get on just fine. We also wanted the Backman Edward with some clerestory coaches. So let me grab the Backman Edward if I can. Where are you, Edward? Where is he hiding? Oh, there he is. Okay. Hopefully the Backman Edward won't let us down today. And he's supposed to have some clerestories, I believe. So let me put Edward down. Here he goes. And I'll grab one or two of my clerestories. So I'll just leave Edward there for you for a second. Um, I think you, I assume you'll have meant the L and ER liveried clerestories because I actually have some LMS ones as well. But uh, yeah, these will do, I think. Uh, one of them's gotten caught on the bubble wrap. <laughs> I always put bubble wrap in the bottom of my um, containers just to protect everything. But uh, yeah, one of the coupling hooks got stuck around it. But uh, okay, so some clerestories then. And then finally, we're going to want to put Donald and Douglas next to each other um, with the green coach in between. That is definitely not something I've ever done before. What an unusual idea that is. <laughs> Again, if someone knows what that's all about, let me know in a second when I get back to the computer and I'll, uh, I'll announce that. But uh, yeah, that, surely that must have happened in a story at some point. Either that or you're very creative. So here's Donald and Douglas. I hope this is gonna work okay. I hope they don't pull each other off. But uh, I think that one's Douglas, number 10. And his tender's come disconnected, so I'm gonna have to put that back on. Hang on. So there is Douglas, I believe. Yeah, I think 10 is Douglas. There's the green coach. Let's pop that on. And then Donald facing the other direction. This is weird. It's, it reminds me a little bit of uh, a Garrett, I suppose, with a, with a coach in between. Garrett's looked a bit like this, didn't they? With uh, Well, not really. But uh, it's the closest I've got to a Garrett, let's say. <laughs> Donald and Douglas. Right, let me try and get this coach coupled coach well it is a coach coupled to the the tender of uh, donald okay let's see if it works shall we this is one of the oddest things i've ever done it does seem to work okay that's good uh let's try the backman edward there he goes with the teaks and of course edward and james double heading their uh, their little bit of a goods train some lms milk train in fact so yep yeah, that's good let's have a little running session with these as always thank you very much to the requests that's all the requests i'm going to have time for today but uh, as always any that i didn't do today i will carry over to next week but i don't think there's many there's one from camille and uh, i think maybe one more so there we go there's uh, james and edward looking brilliant together uh, donald and douglas i don't know if you'll hear this but uh, i'm hearing quite a lot of squeaking from those so maybe they need a bit of a, a service, I don't know. I'll give you a wave. There goes everybody. Let's see if we can see Donald and Douglas go by here. Look at that. What a strange idea. I like it though. Um, NK Productions 2014 says, From Series 2, Sam, when they were snow ploughing, I think it was. Okay, so it did happen in the show then, if that's anything to go by. Very cool. Well, you hadn't lost your mind then. <laughs> that, that actually did happen. Um, there was an episode where Donald and Douglas were clearing snow and were in that formation. So Harry Todd Hunter agrees. So that must be what happened then. Donald and Douglas clearing snow. That's how it happened. If those guys are right. And normally uh, people like that are. <laughs> people know what they're talking about normally when they talk about Thomas and friends. So there you go. That's what happened. And just waiting for it now. Come on. Should be appearing any moment. There they go. Donald and Douglas. And let's just wait here. We'll leave the camera here for Edward to come by. Come on, Edward, where are you? Here he is. With his clerestory coaches. And I think he looks fantastic with them, actually. So really good idea for that. Thank you for those. 
Um, I don't run the Clarestries all that much, so it was nice to give those a little bit of a run. And here now come uh, old Edward and James pulling their good strain, looking very good together. Let's go, let's have them go by, shall we? So thanks for those, that was fantastic. Let's have uh, one more little chat with you then before I say goodbye. Let's see what everyone's saying. Thomas Train 9025 says, can I have a shout out? So of course you can. Uh, Charlie Young has left a sad face, so whatever's wrong with Charlie, I'm sorry. <laughs> Hope you're all right. Um, can you do Scotsman and Mallard with any coach, please? Yep, sure you can. Uh, just uh, send me a super chat next week if you like, and I will be able to do that. Uh, can you do shunting with Duck and Percy, please? Yeah, that's a nice idea. Two green engines. So uh, next time I do a Thomas and Friends uh, shunting video, I might do those. And uh, then Junior Gamers says, when did you get all these Backman engines? Quite recently, I've only been buying the Backman engines over the past year or so. But to be honest with you, I'm enjoying them. They don't run quite as well as the Hornby ones do. Um, I don't know why that is. Um, they're not as smooth. They're not, as, they're not quite as reliable generally. But they're a lot more realistic. They look a lot more like their characters, which is uh, what I like. Um, what's that you say? Keep using caps lock, okay? Says Harry Todd Hunter, okay, fine. And uh, Nyrate Gold says, oops, I've missed most of the stream, but he sent me a super chat. So thank you very, very much for that. That's very kind. And of course, everyone who sent a super chat today got entered to win their very own Bullman. And there's still time. Uh, th there's uh, this week's show in the last few minutes. If you want to send me a super chat, you can uh, get a chance to win him. Otherwise, next week and the week after, there'll still be time before I draw a winner. But I think that's just about it for today's show. So thank you all for watching. I really hope you had a good time. I'm going to give you a few... Um, little hints as to what's coming up next week. Uh, so on Wednesday, I've got something unusual coming up. Um, I haven't absolutely confirmed what it's going to be yet, but it's going to be one or two things. It's going to be either a review, a kind of review that I've never done before, or another uh, visit to a real railway related place. And that was a tongue twister. Um, I'm still waiting to hear from the railway related place, whether or not I can go ahead with the video. But if so, I will do that on Wednesday. And then on Saturday, I'm going to be doing another unboxing of a beautiful LNER locomotive all being well so hopefully that will be enjoyable but for now folks I'm going to just thank all of my uh, super chats for today so uh, bear with me while I just load these up and of course a massive massive thank you to all of these people these are the guys that keep me going and uh, it really is so kind that they want to see this uh, you know this channel uh, keep going it means a lot so dot can pilot of course Aidan Lido the ugly duckman Jake Darling K Van Cullen Lee Molson Sonic Crafter hashtag Speedcraft I said it quite quick that time Taggart double O, Tom Jensen, Dot Can Pilot again, Ollie Turf 26, Camille's Model Railway, Charles Curtis, Jeremy Nickens, Maverick Hicks, uh, what time is it there? He says, right now it's uh, eight minutes past six in the evening here. And Nyrate Goal, of course. So thank you all for your support. I really hope you enjoyed the show. I'll be back, of course, next week on Sunday night at five o'clock UK time. Hope you all enjoyed the show. As always, if you've got any ideas for future shows, uh, do let me have them because I'd love to hear that. But for now, let's say goodbye to everybody. Alan Torres says, that sounds like a plan. Uh, Full, Street, Full Steam Ahead says, bye, have a good time. Sonic Crafter Speedcraft sent another uh, super chat saying, uh, what's with my request from last week? The Thomas. What's that then? <laughs> I don't know. I'll have to look into that. Thanks for that. Um, Charlie Young says Sam didn't answer my question I'm sad I tried to answer everybody's question but as you can see the uh, the chat is going pretty crazy today so I don't get round to everybody but I will try and uh, Nyrek Goal again with a, a super chat says bye hopefully I'll catch the next one yeah no problem hope, hope to see you next week all being well and uh, Jalen Proctor says I did not get a shout out well that's not true you did now and then Mark says uh, the ugly duck man no Callum is waiting in the wings if he turns up <laughs> and also, there isn't a race next weekend. I suppose you must be still talking about uh, the F1. Um, the Amory Junction asks a question, what channels do you watch on YouTube? I'll answer that one. All sorts is the answer to that. Recently, I've been watching a channel called The Carpet Bagger. I absolutely love The Carpet Bagger. Let me know in the chat if uh, that's a channel that you watch as well. Um, he goes around the, uh, the south of America, um, so uh, North Carolina, that kind of area, just looking at roadside attractions and uh, old abandoned buildings and things. Um, I just find it fascinating, and I think his channel's brilliant. So check out The Carpet Bagger. I also like Deep Digger Dan. I like uh, The Angry Grandpa. Uh, not a lot of train related ones to be honest because um, I get a little bit trained up here with, uh, with what I do but uh, let's see here um, other channels I like to watch 
let me have a look on my subscribers and I can let you know. I can let you know who I'm subscribed to. Um, so Deep Digger Dan I've talked about. Um, Boogie2988, I like him. Jorg Sprav, the Slingshot channel, I love him. Uh, Ashens is a big one. I love Stuart Ashens. He's a, a brilliant YouTuber. Um, Michael Chartres uh, is good. Uh, he went on a nice holiday uh, not so long ago, which I watched. SDJR7F88, of course, I, I look at. Um, let's see here. Who else do I look at? I think that's pretty much it. That's that's the main ones. Um, yeah, the Angry Grandpa. Photonic Induction, that's, a, that's one I like. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So lots of YouTube channels I like to watch. Um, anyway, thank you everybody. Um, thank you to everyone who sent a, a comment or a super chat or anything like that. ECML man wants a shout out, so there you go. GWR5764 Pannier is saying hello. And Sam, you like Jack Films, says Horry Todd Hunter. Never heard of him, but it sounds good to me. Anyway, folks, I better get off. So thank you all for watching. I'll see you all next week. Thanks for your support. I love having you here, and I hope you've had a good time uh, seeing the J83 and other stuff. All right, folks, uh, thank you again, and uh, I'll get out of here. All right, let me uh, find the outro. There it is. All right, folks, thank you for joining me, and I'll see you soon. Love you all. See you next time. Well, that's the end of today's live stream, so thanks to everyone for joining me, and I really hope you all enjoyed it. As always, if you've got any ideas for future streams, I'd be very glad to hear them, so feel free to post them down below in the comments. Sam's Trains Live will be back next Sunday night at 5pm UK time, so until then, look after yourselves, and I'll see you during the week with some more new videos. Cheers, everybody.